Everybody talks to you about your past, where you've came from, but for me, what I want to know is, where are you going now? You accomplished your dream of getting in the UFC, you beat a drug addiction, you stayed sober. What are you doing now? My past obviously makes up a big part of who I am now and, and what I'm doing now and what I want to do. My goal is to use fighting as a platform to help other people that dealt or are dealing with the same things that I have dealt with. Like you said, everybody always talks to me about my past and yeah, they do, but I want to keep that in the past and now move forward and just be on a positive note for now. And you mention a platform in what ways? By sharing your story and inspiring others or what are you trying to accomplish? Not everyone wants to listen to like a, no a nobody and so I feel like using fighting. My goal is to become UFC champion and I really believe that I will. Like once I make a name for myself then I can use that as a way for people to listen to me more than they would have maybe if I wasn't who I'm going to be. That's the goal. In the New York fight scene you're pretty well known. I mean you were CFFC champion and You've accomplished a lot of things here in New York City. Do you feel like the person that you are in New York is someone that inspires others already? Definitely. I've, I'm, I'm already helping people. You know, I'm involved in certain uh, things outside of fighting, which are helping people. You know, people tell me I inspire them and I, and I help them to do better every day, so I'm getting there. And as for the upcoming UFC card that you're going to be on, there's a couple of people that, you know, you said you looked up to Frankie Edgar, and now you're fighting on a card with him. Eddie Alvarez is on the card. David Branch is on the card. What's that like for you to finally make it and fight with these people next to you? It's pretty amazing. When I was like 16, 17, I remember watching these guys fighting in UFC already and, and uh, I never would have thought that I would be fighting on the same card as them. But you know, I worked hard and now I'm here and, and it's a blessing and so I'm really excited. And you said you want to be champion. What do you feel like about you has a champion's heart? Hard work and dedication is one thing, but I think that like uh, to persevere and the adversity that I face will help me deal with things that I know are going to come with fighting, like injuries and, and you know just pushing through and every day grinding to get to that point. Tell us what it was like to finally get signed by Dana White. Finally, get that call that you've been waiting for. I was 11 and one before I fought uh, Bill Aljo in front of Dana White for looking for a fight. So I knew I was there, like I was close, and, and a lot of people thought that I should have already been in UFC. It was pretty cool to get the quote-unquote call that way instead of just you know one day getting a call or, or going through the Ultimate Fighters. It's like a unique way now to get onto the into the big show. I feel like I kind of almost got like my UFC debut out of the way because like if there's anyone I had to impress, you know Dana was the guy, and and I fought in front of him, and he's the one that signed me. It's not like you know one of the matchmakers signed me. It was Dana who thought, you know, that I could make it in UFC and so he signed me. What does it feel like for you to transition from that into the UFC? Do you feel nervous, excited, confident? Always nervous. I always have horrible anxiety and, <laughs> you know, you figure it would get better as you go along, but as the stakes get higher, for me, it tends to get worse, but I'm doing certain things to cope with those feelings and you know, I'm really excited, obviously, but I feel like, you know, it's cool and it's a big goal to get to UFC, but that was like a short-term goal. Another short-term goal that I have set now is to become the champion, to climb the ladder and become champion. Going back to Frankie Edgar, uh, you know, everybody says he's one of the hardest workers in the gym and you started at his old gym, right? Well, I fought for a Rhino Fight Team, which he trained with also, and there was two teams though. There was one in Queens and one in Jersey. He did train in Queens, but he was more of the, like on the Jersey team. I didn't really, I didn't know him then, but it's cool to have started in the same place as he did. And I remember watching him thinking like, this guy's gonna be the champion, and, and then he became the champion. Not that I want to follow in his footsteps, but that path would be, would be a good one to follow. You train with a lot of amazing people. You train here at Church Street Boxing. You also train at Henzo Gracie's, who, like the caliber of people that you have around you, how do you feel like that helps you as a person and as a fighter? I train with like some of the best grapplers in the country and I, I think I, I believe that my coach, uh, Jason Stroud, is the best striking coach in New York City and he's really brought me really far. He, no matter how well I'm doing, he tells me, you know, to do better and there's no, like, he's like, uh, excuse my language, like a no shit type of guy. He doesn't take any bullshit from you. And I might be doing something right, but he always finds something to put me down about. So. Like a dad almost, right? In a sense, yeah. Like, he's definitely like a mentor also. The things that he does regularly 
outside of the gym. Like that's a great example for me. For one example, I've never seen anyone treat uh, their girl or their, their his wife like the way he does. Like everything is yes, sure. Like, and I'm like, wow, this guy is like it's just an amazing husband. And you know, it's not just like fighting stuff that I take from him. It's like life stuff in general. Do you also coach or uh, teach people here? I teach here at Church Street Boxing and I have clients and teach them classes. And I think that helps me also because I get to work with people and see their mistakes and then you know, Jason will say the same things to me, like, got to stop doing this, and then I'll see other people doing it, and I'm like, oh, that's what Jason's talking about. So it's all it's all a learning process for me. But uh, there's also another person in my coach, uh, Michael Jaramillo. He, he's uh, John Danaher's first black belt, and he's been a huge addition to my last three fight camps. He's been cornering me for the last three fights, and uh, he's brought me to another level as well. What type of coach do you feel like you could say that you are? As of now, I don't really look at myself as, as much of a coach, because I'm not training fighters. I I think I show like dedication and hard work and I think that helps people to, to strive for that as well.